All right. Can everyone see it okay? Perfect. Well, welcome everyone to the first MCAT workshop. We are super excited for this series. Um, as you all know, the MCAT is a big test and um, I know that it's very intimidating for some people. And so we're here to hopefully make that process a lot less intimidating and to help you with um, all of the steps as you kind of figure out how you're gonna study, when you're gonna study, and when you're gonna take the test. So this is just an overview of the workshops for this fall. Um, this first one about the MCAT and getting started, that's the one you're at right now. Um, we do have one on November 4th, that's MCAT content review. Um, November 11th is MCAT practice resources. Uh, November 18th is study skills and November 23rd is stress management and wellness. So all of these are super important and they will give you the basics and the building blocks for you to then figure out um, exactly how you wanna to put together your study schedule and uh, what resources you want to use. And we're hoping to keep all of these workshops um, under about 30 minutes, maybe even under 20 minutes um, and leave the rest of the time for questions. Um, and these workshops will also be posted on the pre elf website after we get them recorded and uploaded. So the agenda for today is first, we're gonna do an overview of the MCAT, the sections and what uh, content is covered in each section. Uh, we'll also discuss when you should take the MCAT based on your schedule. And then we'll discuss fee assistance and budgeting. And before we get started, here's a quote from Albert Einstein. Uh, education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. As you kind of go throughout your MCAT preparation, you'll, you'll find uh, a lot of the studying is not just going to be memorizing the content, but being able to apply that and think through questions and find the best answers. And so keep, let's keep that in mind as we go forward. And that's me. Um, yeah, so let's jump right into a overview of the MCAT. So what is the exam and what all does it stand for? So the MCAT, as I found out a few weeks ago or a few days ago, actually stands for the Medical College Admission Test. And it's uh, put on by the Association of American Medical Colleges. It's a seven and a half hour exam. So definitely pack a lunch and pack some snacks. Um, it's taken on a computer, so it's not a written test, but you are allowed a notepad and a dry erase marker. And there are four sections and each section is scored from a range of 118 to 132. So scores because of that range from 472 to 528, which is the perfect score. Um, when you take the exam, it will look a certain way. So this is kind of a screenshot of what the exam will look like. On one side, you'll have the passage and the question. And on the other side, you'll have the choices to choose from. And then you have like highlighting tools, you have a strike through tool, um, and then you can also like navigate through the exam. So this is kind of like a screenshot of what it looks like. You also have a timer in the upper right hand corner. So what are the four sections and how, uh, what are some classes that you can take to prepare for them? The first section is the chemistry um, and physics section, also called the chemical and physical foundations of biological systems. This section is 59 questions and it, uh, you have 95 minutes to take this section. Uh, you'll have about a mix, uh, a good mix of passage and discrete based questions. So you'll usually have about two to four passages with about six to eight questions each. And then you'll have a series of three to five discrete questions um, after each kind of group and cluster of passages. You are not allowed a calculator, um, so you'll have to do all your calculations by hand. Um, and the, this section does have more of the mathy type questions. Um, also, there are a few classes that you can take to prepare for this section. Uh, you can take the inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and biochemistry. Um, so taking those classes will definitely help prepare you for this section. This is an example of a practice chem phys question. Um, this is a, what you would call a discrete question. So it's not based on a written passage, but it's just a standalone question. Um, so yeah, what hydrogen is the most acidic? The answer would be D or this uh, uh, hydrogen E right here. Um, but that's just an example of what a question would look like. The next section that you'll take is the critical analysis and reasoning skills section. 
This section, you have 53 questions over 90 minutes, and it's all passage based. So in this section, it's kind of like the uh, reading section, critical reading section of uh, the SAT or at ACT. It's very similar to that, but just higher level. So a few classes that you can take to prepare for this, um, like great text, English, humanity classes. So any class where you have to read hard literature or journal articles will help you prepare for this section and help you like critically think and analyze uh, different texts. Also just in your free time, reading research journals or editorials from different newspapers or um, different academic journals will be very helpful. Um, if you aren't really into reading journals and would rather do something else, we have a pre-health reading list and just reading books in different subjects and fields will also help you. Also challenge yourself uh, as you prepare for the MCAT, the harder things that you read, if that means digging out some philosophy books, the more prepared you'll be for the section. Um, there's a wide range of things here. Now here's a sample Carr's passage. Uh, I'm not gonna read through the whole thing, but this will again be posted afterwards so you guys can look through that. Uh, you guys can also look at the website called Jack Weston and they have a ton of uh, practice Carr's uh, passages that you could look through and read through just to get an idea of what it would be like. Uh, the next section that you'll encounter is the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems, which is the bio biochem section. This section is similar to uh, chem phys in that it's 59 questions and you have 95 minutes and you have a mixture of passage based and discrete uh, content. Uh, a few classes that will prepare you for this are introductory bio one and two, which are intro bio one and two with the labs, genetics, human physiology, and then biochemistry one and possibly biochem two. That's kind of like a debated course there, um, but definitely take biochem one before taking the MCAT would be very helpful. A practice bio biochem question is uh, like this one. It asks a lot of questions on uh, different tests that you might use to determine different properties of molecules. Um, so in this question, I believe the answer is B. Um, so again, you guys can look back at that and give that a look in your free time. The, next, the last section that you'll have is this uh, psychological, social, and biological foundation of behavior section or the psych social section. Uh, this section has, again, 59 questions over 95 minutes, also a mix of passages and discrete questions. Um, if you can take sociology, psychology, and statistics, that's really basically all you need to know for this section. Um, most people consider this the section, the easiest section to improve your score in because it's based mostly off of those three classes and things that you learn in those courses um, rather than like five classes like in the other sections. So that's a good overview of the that section. And then here's a practice question or something that you'll probably see on the test. Again, this is a discrete question. And I believe the answer to this one is uh, C, the base rate fallacy. So again, give these a look at the end, um, kind of get a good idea of what the MCAT is like. Sean? Awesome. So now we're gonna take a look at the scoring of the MCAT. Um, the labels there got a little funky, but on the left are basically the percentiles. Um, that were given for each score in 2017, 2018. So the MCAT is scored based on a curve. So, so people scoring at a 500 will be at the 50th percentile, as you can kind of see uh, in that middle column right there. Um, as you look near the top, near like the 518, 519, 520 range, you start seeing a lot of those scores are all kind of in that highest 96 or above percentile. So. Um, anything really in that 90th percentile is like a very good score. And so um, that can be like one of the aims that you have as you go forward um, with your MCAT preparation. On the right, you'll see what the MCAT scoring looks like when you get your results back on the day your scores are released. And so you'll get a score for each section and then a, a total score shown in green at the bottom there. And so, uh, like I mentioned, the average score on the MCAT is a 500, just because that's uh, how the exam is scored on a uh, curve. Each section averages 125 uh, if you split that into four. Uh, for the TMDSAS, which is the Texas Application for Medical Schools, uh, the average applicant had an MCAT score of 505, and the average matriculant, meaning 
uh, people who got accepted into medical school uh, was 509.9. And remember, these scores were from a few years back and scores have been increasing uh, each and every year. And one of the recommendations Dr. Senker usually gives is a 512 and 513 is where uh, you'd be pretty comfortable applying to most Texas medical schools. Um, AMCAS, which is the application for most of the national schools in the US, uh, those are some of the scores for applicants uh, in those previous years. And so they look pretty similar to uh, the Texas school. And so um, you might be thinking, how do I select a target score for myself? How do I know what's gonna be uh, an attainable and reachable goal? And so the first step there would be to take a diagnostic exam. Uh, and there's lots of free ones that we'll cover in future workshops and see what you already know, see what kind of content you've covered before in your classes or that you remember really well. And you will also see what you need to improve on in order to really boost that score. Carolyn was mentioning psych uh, is a great opportunity to increase scores uh, since it is limited to like those two, three classes that you can really self-study. Um, the second thing you can do is research the medical schools that you'd like to attend and see what kind of MCAT scores they need um, for acceptance. One really cool tool is called the MSAR. That's the Medical School Admission Requirement Tool. Uh, we'll have a slide on it uh, coming up in a second. Um, but essentially it shows different schools and what kind of MCAT scores their applicants and matriculants are getting. And then lastly, um, you know, try to pick a target score that is attainable but challenges you. So kind of think about how you uh, have done in the past with your exams or standardized tests. Some people might be better at standardized tests and might not study as much, whereas others um, might have a little more testing anxiety or things like that, and they just need a little more time to get stronger scores. And so there's lots of different factors to consider there um, as you're trying to select a target score. Y'all have anything to add to that, Cassidy or Carolyn? All right, fantastic. And then here shows the MSAR tool. This is officially made by the AAMC. So this is the most legitimate and most up-to-date resource that you're gonna get when it comes to things like finding the median GPA, finding the median MCAT. And this uh, tool basically has any, anything you'll need to know about how the curriculum is run at that school, how they do grading, how big their class sizes are. And so um, I believe it costs somewhere around 15 to $30, um, but it's a super useful tool, especially as you uh, try to pick a target score for the MCAT, as well as when you're applying to medical schools. So definitely look into investing in this program. You can kind of see at the bottom, uh, a lot of you guys might be interested in Baylor College of Medicine. You can kind of get a good idea of their median GPA and median MCAT. Uh, right there. And so now you could also be asking, when should I take the exam? And so um, for those of you guys interested in taking the exam this upcoming spring, uh, registration is actually opening up soon. November 2nd is when they open up pre-registration. This means you can go into the double AMC website and log in all of your information for like your name, email address, uh, physical address, that kind of thing. You can basically do everything except pick your test date. On November 10th is when you can actually go in, log in, find the test date and testing center that works best for you. Know that if you're in a more densely populated area, say like in a metropolitan area like Houston, Dallas, or Austin, those test dates uh, typically run out a little faster. And so it's better if you sign up for those early on. Um, if you're like planning to take it in Waco, I noticed for my test in January, uh, spots were open basically until the week before the exam. And so just kind of be aware of where you're wanting to take the test and try to uh, sign up early on. And so if you're asking when should you take it, uh, the best answer for that is when you are ready. And so by that, I mean, try to think if you've taken a lot of the classes uh, that Carolyn mentioned, that might be helpful for each of the sections in the MCAT. If you haven't taken them, do you have enough time to self-study them or review the contents to where you're comfortable? Um, most people do take the MCAT in the spring of their junior year if they're on a traditional four-year path and are planning to go to medical school right afterwards. And so that is typically around the January, uh, May period. 
Um, one thing to consider is that medical school applications do open up in May for the Texas applications and June for the national applications. So having your MCAT done before then and with enough time to consider if maybe you need to retake the MCAT or um, to give you time to kind of just take a break and prepare your applications, uh, those are things to keep in mind as you're choosing a test day. Awesome. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about budgeting. Um, I know that this isn't something that a lot of people think about before they get into MCAT setting, but it is something that is super important to think about right at the get-go as you are planning to get started. So how to budget for the MCAT. The first step is know the resources that are available. Um, you can research the different prices of the resources. You can apply for scholarship and fee assistant programs. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Um, then the second step is figure out how much you are willing and able to spend on MCAT prep. Everyone has different budgets and it's a good idea to have um, a solid idea of how much you want to spend. Um, with that, you wanna decide what combination of resources you want to invest in. And remember to include all of the costs that you will incur through MCAT prep. And so that'll include registration for the MCAT, practice content a and AAMC material. Um, those last three categories of material, we will go into depth um, more about which resources you can use. And uh, we're gonna talk a lot about um, the free resources and the more extensive resources in um, workshops coming up. And so I recommend you attend those to get that information. Um, and then the third step is to write out a budget on a spreadsheet. If you write it out, you will be much more likely to stick to it. And um, of course, hold yourself accountable to it. I know that it's so easy to be like, oh, I'll just reschedule my MCAT. But you do have to realize you have to pay every single time you do that. Um, so just be aware of the different costs that come with um, the different steps of taking the MCAT. So potential costs to consider. So it's not just financial costs, it's also time costs. Um, I know a lot of different people have different study plans and so decide what's best for you. Um, but most people do about 20 hours a week for three to four months. Um, and then that might be 10 to 15 practice tests for you. And so ultimately you will be dedicating a lot of time to this. Um, and so like Sean was talking about with scheduling your MCAT, make sure you are doing it uh, during a time of your life that you're able to dedicate time to it. Uh, maybe that means taking um, 12 hours instead of 15 or maybe taking a lighter class load. Um, but all of that is super important to consider um, before deciding to take the MCAT. Financial costs, as you can see, it can get really pricey very quickly. And so registering for the MCAT itself is $320. Online Kaplan course is $2,600. Do not worry, you don't have to register, register for an online course like that to do well. Uh, we'll talk more about that in other workshops. Um, and then MCAT tutoring can be upwards of $1,000. And then again, rescheduling the MCAT is also a cost you have to consider. So I wanna talk a little bit about the MCAT fee assistance program, if you don't know much about that already. Um, so it provides a financial assistance to individuals who would find it very difficult, if not impossible to take the MCAT and to apply to medical schools um, and fulfill other obligations on the path to a career in med medicine. And so in 2020, you will be uh, granted fee Fee assistance, if each household reported on your application has a 2019 total family income that is 400% or less than the 2019 national poverty level for that family size. So I believe the AMC website has more information on whether you're eligible and I think you can fill out some information to see for sure. And so I recommend you do that if you're interested in this program. Um, it comes with a lot of really valuable stuff um, for a discounted or free price. Uh, so you do get the current MCAT official prep product uh, bundle, which is very expensive um, to pay for yourself. You get a reduced registration fee. Um, you get a complimentary subscription to the MSAR tool that Sean talked about. And then you get a waiver for all of the uh, AMCAS fees for one application submission with up to 20 medical school designations. So if you think that you might qualify for the program, it is definitely worth it to look into that and whether you can apply for it. 
So as a reminder, we do have these workshops. I know I briefly went over um, the whole deciding which resources you're going to use and um, kind of planning all that out. The November and the 4th and the November 11th workshops are going to be super beneficial. We're going to dive deep into what resor resources are out there, um, what free resources are out there, and what we recommend you do to kind of put together your study schedule. All right, so that's all we have for y'all. Um, I think we made it right around 20 minutes, which is exactly what we were going for. Um, what we want to do now.